to those forking fangirls where we talk all things nerdy book, TV, movie, pop culture, fandoms, and how they integrate into our adult lives. I'm Christine. And I'm Natasha. And today we are discussing our famous, famous, our favorite, (laughs) our favorite romance authors and our favorite books of theirs. It's going to be a fun time. Plus, we've got Snap Crackle pop culture news. What right now? It's been a hot second since we recorded because Mm -hmm. I've been out in New Jersey for Olivia's wedding. I was sick. Natasha was sick. We've got a lot to talk about. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And as always, we're going to start with Snap Crackle pop culture news. Natasha, what do you have for us this week? Oh, my gosh. My Oxford year is (laughs) adapted um okay if you guys didn't know christine and i read this book a long time ago this is ago. by the <laughs> julia whelan yeah julia whelan the, the really the audiobook. great audiobook narrator at first this was optioned with sam hewen yeah no, wait the, sam hewen for some reason i've been picturing finnick odair no it was sam hewen oh shit i forgot about that so at first this was optioned with Sam Hewen. Like, I want to say 2017. I want to say 20... 2016 even. It was yeah. so long ago. It was like at the height of Outlander Yeah, um, when that was announced. However, Netflix just announced Corey My- Michael- Michaelis. The guy who I'm... plays the king. King George. Yeah, and Queen Charlotte. Yeah. He's playing the lead alongside Sophia Carson. You know, Sophia Carson is not my favorite. Who so. is Sophia Carson? She's like a Disney Channel girly. She has like that extreme side part and then it's like pulled over. But who does she and play? And she sings. Oh, oh, she's in Descendants. Sophia Carson also did a movie called Purple Hearts with... Oh, that the, movie what? that you hate. <laughs> I hated it. Wait, what's his what's his face from, from Red Bright? Red, it. White, and Royal Blue? Oh, Nickel wait. Nicholas Galatine. Nicholas Galatine. Okay. He's in the Purple Heart movie. He's the love interest and he doesn't even look like himself. What? Yeah, you should watch it. Just like to hate watch you said it. it. You hated it. But it was somewhat <laughs> enjoyable because it like was still like a dumb dumb romance, but it had like rightist agenda to it. So oh my God. All right. I'm excited for my Oxford year to finally be adapted. I mean, it was a sad book, but I did enjoy it. It's been a while. I'm happy for Julia Whelan that Netflix is going to be adapting it finally after all this time. All right. I don't know if you guys remember, but I canceled my Apple TV subscription because I was like, oh, I got eyelashes. So girl math, (laughs) I'll cancel my Apple TV subscription. (laughs) Of course, right after that, Apple TV tweets that Severance season two is coming soon to Apple TV. And I was like, I don't know what soon means, but soon mean soon they didn't give a date <laughs> they just said soon and it came without warning it came without tags it came without packages boxes or bags <laughs> i've known nothing of severance except that it like started filming a while ago and now all of a sudden it's coming soon are you kidding me has it been two years it's yeah. been a long time dude right. why why are shows taking two years because they're, they're trying to been... make it good that's i why. know but if this has been like the biggest topic of discussion lately, like, you know, alongside Bridgerton having eight episodes in two years what? and then House of the Dragon taking two years. Guys, now- I don't care if it takes two years. It's going to be better. I do. I'm depressed. Well, <laughs> you want good content, not shitty content. So let them have their time. <laughs> Fine. Severance season one was phenomenal. We both loved it. I am so excited for more. I have to go rewatch the first season, though, because it has been two years. But it kind of makes it more exciting because then you rewatch it because you forgot and you have a great time and you're ready for season two completely because you just rewatched. I'm excited. Of course, Apple fucking TV. I have to go subscribe again. So, so annoying. So, stupid. so romance author Beverly Jenkins, um, she's like a renowned black 
a romance and historical romance author. I think I've read one of her books. Um, but she just announced, or they just announced that her blessing series is being adapted by universal and BC by John legend. And this one is, um, not historical, but then there's another series that was hers called the Skyland series. And that is historical romance. And that's also being adapted. And a lot of people saying that it's going to be like the new Bridgerton. Because it's like an interlocking series cool. with black characters at the forefront. I, it's not during Regency. I think it's more like later, like Victorian era, maybe like, yeah, something like that. But fun. I'm excited. Yeah, that sounds great. I wanted to address, Katie said, like, how did they used to put out 24 episodes a year and now it's eight every two years? And it's uh, the answer is that the writers and the actors never fucking slept. They were in a constant state of writing Mm -hmm. and trying to come up, pack so much drama into the first season. That's why the seasons would get poor faster because they had to do so much in one season that they'd run out of good storylines. I don't know if you've rewatched the season one of the OC lately, but everything happens that could ever happen. It's season one of the OC. It's amazing. But that's why by season three, they were like, shit. <laughs> Oh, what anyway. now and you talk to those actors and they were just constantly like all the turnaround time was insane the work yeah, hours they would film were insane like an episode in a week yeah like they would film one in a week yes and they did not have much time in between to like schedule other projects so that's why a lot of people would be like oh i'm not doing this anymore yeah i i don't want to go back to 22 or 24 episodes a year like definitely not but I think a happy medium could be like 16 episodes like Outlander does roughly around like 12 to 16 per season. And I don't see why we can't go back to that. But like Bridgerton, for instance, took eight months to film a full season. That's well, a month per episode, which I mean, that's a that's we have to think about how much production goes into Bridgerton because it is a, a time period piece. So Mm -hmm. they have to do a lot with the locations. They are filming on location a lot. They have a huge cast. The cast is popular. Like there's a lot of balls in the air that they have to deal with. Also, we have to think about the fact that back in the day with the 24, 22 episodes, we were getting 43 minute episodes because they were accounting for ads. Now, a lot of the times we get like solid hour long episodes and 55 Mm -hmm. minute episodes, which doesn't seem like it's longer, but that's significantly longer than we would get on mainstream television. And if it takes them eight episodes to, I mean, I'm honestly, I would love like 10 episodes at least, Mm -hmm. but we're riding off of what Netflix is giving them for a budget is probably what I'm thinking in terms of like it being eight and not 10, because we definitely could have used one more episode, I think in this third season, Mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, they're doing the best they can. This is a high budget piece. (laughs) Mm, Very much. Like all of the balls and the sets in the season Mm -hmm. were so elaborate not to mention like the wigs and the costumes yes yes so that's what's going on there (laughs) the strike probably also delayed things julia said yes it definitely did i think originally bridget was supposed to come out december is what they announced in brazil but then obviously the strike happened all right romance con is coming up in september we are going to be there those forking fangirls are doing a live podcast at romance con which takes place in milwaukee wisconsin on september i want to say fifth and sixth but for some reason sixth and seventh i can never get these dates right sixth and seventh it's a friday and saturday it's a friday and saturday we are going to be doing a an official live recording with myself, Natasha, Chloe, and Julie Murphy. We're going to be talking about smut and such. It'll be available afterward, of course, but we'll also be doing a little meetup at Romance Con. I'm an author at Romance Con, so I will be doing signings of my books and I will be on a couple panels which is really cool because I rarely get to be an author on a panel and it makes me feel like a real girl, (laughs) a real author. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a really fun time. It's going to be a Those Forking Fangirls filled weekend. And we are so excited to see any of y'all there. (laughs) Very excited. I was looking at flights the other day. 
I have to look at flights. Yeah. I've got some today in Taylor Swift news today. It's been a little bit. It's been a hot it second. It has been a little bit. So Taylor Swift was in Cardiff and she did two amazing mashups that I was listening to this morning. And I was just like so jealous that these people got to see this live. She did. I forgot that you existed mashed up with this is why we can't have nice things. Hmm. And then the piece de la resistance. She did. I hate it here. Mashed with the lakes. Two of my faves on the piano. I need, I need to listen to that. It's wow. beautiful. I listened to it like three times back to back. I loved it. That was in Cardiff. She's wearing an orange dress. Now on Twitter, likes are private. So you can't like go to my likes to find oh. it. But I can send you the full version if you don't have it. And 18 years ago today, Taylor Swift debuted. Isn't that wild? Oh, wow. Yeah. Wild. Her career is 18 years strong. Also... My novel, Attached at the Hip, is out in the wild. It is a survivor rom-com. <laughs> I love it so much, so I hope that y'all love it too if you haven't read it yet. And the link is in the show notes if you want to check it out. I've done a lot of videos about it on my um, Instagram. If you haven't seen, if you need more information, or you could just look up more information, the link in the show notes. But it's out in all different formats. Everyone loves the audio. I loved mm -hmm. the audio. Or it's an ebook, or it's a regular book. And if you have already read it, it's so, so helpful to myself and the book to help more people find it. If you took a second to review it on Amazon or Barnes and Noble or wherever, or like Audible, wherever you listened or read. Um, and if you just got it from a bookstore, super helpful to just review it on Amazon because Amazon will recommend books that have more reviews. So if you liked it, I'd really, really greatly appreciate that. And same with barnesandnoble.com. You can just copy and paste your review and it doesn't have to be elaborate. Just a couple sentences or a sentence, like anything is so helpful. <laughs> um, thank you so much if you've already done that or if you're going to go do that. I really, really thank you. I appreciate it. I need to go do that. Yes, please go review it on Amazon. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and if you haven't uh, yet, um, it's super helpful to request it. It's simple to see if your local library has it, if they don't have it, <laughs> to request that they have it so that you can read it there and other people can find it there. Thank you all so much for all your support with my book thus far. It's meant so, so much. The reactions I've been seeing across the interweb have been so nice. So thank you. And then last but not least. Yeah. What is this Game of Thrones thing? Yeah. So there's a new Game of Thrones spinoff coming out next year and it's called a night of the seven kingdoms have you heard of it the first look dropped and it's just like one picture of a guy walking through like a town in the game of thrones universe but i didn't even know of this so i wanted to mention it <laughs> i put my money on it being great because they're definitely going to put some time and thought into the series i hope so i think they've really learned from their past mistakes and mm -hmm. they're trying to do better oh yeah links to romance con are also in the show notes if you um need them everything's in the show notes i hope that they do the fall of is it valerian the fall oh, like valeria valeria yeah i hope they do that with like the first of the targaryens that's what i would really like to see i'd like to see that too i need to catch up i feel like so out of the loop because i haven't watched house of the dragon i hate it i hate feeling out of the loop it's it. okay well we can talk about it what right now it's a very heavy show so i know it's like alex tried to make me rewatch it and I'm like, I don't really want to rewatch it. I just, I don't really want to go through those emotions again. Yeah. Okay. Let's move into what right now. Do you want to talk about TV first? Go yeah. Ahead. So that's basically all I've been doing um, is watching TV. We had a, oh, trifecta of a weekend last weekend. Uh, we had Bridgerton come out. We had oh, The yeah. Boys come out. We had House of the Dragon come out. Don't and forget Perfect, perfect Match. match. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love love perfect match. <laughs> Let's talk about Bridgerton. I, okay, I feel like we should do like a bonus episode and talk about our thoughts on season well, three. Weren't we gonna do a season like another episode? Why don't we oh yeah, we were gonna episode? do another episode. Okay, all right. Uh, Bridgerton season three, the last half of it came out. Yes, I did. have a lot of thoughts. I'm mostly just Same. depressed. I'm very depressed that the whole thing is over. There's no more tour. It felt like the Barbie tour. Like we kept, like they kept having premieres and we could see what they were wearing and, and all the cute little interactions between Luke Newton and Nicola Coughlin. 
and now I'm depressed because it's all over. Like, you guys, I literally cried at the very end of the show. And then I, I was like, okay, what am I supposed to do now? Just go to bed? <laughs> I don't know. I cried because the show had a nice uh, emotional arc in the end. Okay, yes. Well, I have a larger attachment to it than <laughs> that. I'm like, I'm literally, this is like my new Twilight. Like, I'm just sad. Yeah, they'll be back. Not enough pollen. That is my main thing. There should have been way more. Yeah, I feel like they needed one more episode. I don't like that it ended so quickly, but I did really love the evolution of Penelope and her mom. I really felt that a lot. Mm -hmm. It was really beautiful. I mean, yeah, the, the healing that went on between the family members, I think, was the most satisfying. It was really, really, like, that honestly was... That's my favorite part of the season for me. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mrs. Featherington, like finally taking her daughter seriously and realizing that she's been an asshole and like genuinely like at first she's just like, ugh, I guess I'm going to be nice. But then she like genuinely kind of has a turnaround point and it's really nice. Mm hmm. Apparently, Sophie said, apparently there were four pollen scenes that were deleted. Why would they delete them? Just, so, like, put them on. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I, I don't understand that. Uh, I, I, I've seen, like, talk that people saw early screenings and that there were scenes that were cut. I don't know if this is true. Do you think the scene, like, in the street was longer? I There was a whole list of scenes. I just, I don't, I don't remember which, like, what they were. But I know that the scene at the very end was was longer yeah well they should have had their own scene and not been part of a montage <laughs> for real perfect match season two dropped there's one more drop the finale episode but i'm enjoying the crap out of it it's great Me tv too. it's so fun i love perfect match <laughs> christine's like i'm just so if you guys are watching it you're not going to understand but she's like i'm just so mad at harry and jess <sighs> And like the way, blah, blah, blah. Well, no, I just, Harry is like a reformed rake wannabe. Mm -hmm. And that's like, that's what I've been like saying out loud to the TV. And Me then too. Natasha like texts <laughs> saying that he's a reformed rake. And I was like, he's an unreformed rake. <laughs> he's not reformed. Um, Jess is from Love, is, Love Blind, is Blind. And she's like, and she was the one who was like, you're, you're gonna, gonna choke. choke. You're gonna need <laughs> an EpiPen. What you, your airways are gonna close up. <laughs> <laughs> and she is so beautiful and so grounded and, and she's like very smart. The she's the most mom. healed person. Like she, everything she's that comes out of her lot. mouth is just amazing. Um, she deserves literally like a gold star, man. Like. She deserves everything. And Harry is definitely not that. But the toxic girly in me fucking loves this dynamic. It is like a little romance story. And so that's what got me hooked this season because I saw Jess and then I went back and watched season one. <sighs> yeah, season one is fun. Francesca. <laughs> well, after I watched it, I like went on a Netflix reality show tour and I watched. All the other ones are not good. No, yeah. I watched Too Hot to Handle. Didn't like that. Like. No. The whole thing is not to have sex or... Uh, no, don't like that. That's so silly. I tried to watch it, but I was like, there's no stakes here. The other one is siblings or... Dated or related or something. Dated or related. That one was boring. Um, I like The Circle. So I've been watching I The Circle. I love The Circle. I'm so <laughs> glad you're finally watching. Next Survivor. <laughs> I know. I know. I, I As soon as I said I, I told you I was watching The Circle, I'm like, she's going to make me watch Survivor. And I will. <laughs> Season seven? Season seven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, okay, news on Survivor. The fifth most watched show on tel uh, CV. I don't know if it's CBS or TV, but, like, all the other stuff is sports. It's just football wow. that's beating Survivor. Is that show still on? Yeah, I think so, bish. <laughs> what have you read? I've been reading The Viscount Who Loved Me by Julia Quinn. This is, is that? The third Anthony's, or second? This is Anthony's story. Okay. There are so many different little things in the book versus the show. There's a whole scene where she's crouched under the desk while he comes in with like his like contessa that he's having an affair with. And then he notices her and then he tells the contessa to leave. And then he like like they're like fighting under the desk with his foot and she's like biting his ankle and he's like stepping on her fingers. It was fucking hilarious. A little violent, 
but um funny <laughs> wow and i understand why they didn't put it in the show because i can't imagine what simone ashley would look like biting johnny's ankle <laughs> Interesting. I'm reading Paradise Problem, but also slow. Being a full-time content creator again has really fucked with my reading. Mm. <laughs> like it was already hard being a writer and reading, and now I'm just like you have both. Uh, both. I have to. I have to get audiobooks. So that like, and that's the problem. I don't have yeah. the audiobook of Paradise Problem, so I'm chugging along like five to ten pages every night and then i'm like i'm so tired <laughs> i don't know how i'm like i just zoom through that book i could not no i'm loving it i'm just like sleepy at the end of the day i you know what the problem is okay i'll be honest really okay the book has been thrown around my bathroom a lot because i keep chucking it out of the shower and i brought it on the plane and i need to clean it because i don't want to bring it near my bed that's why because every you? night i'm like i want to continue reading it but it's like dirty oh my so god I need to get, like an anti-back wash over the outside you know what you need it. i'm gonna get it for you one day for, mm, for your birthday's coming up i'm gonna get you like a little like a uh, an, an, a light that just like va vaporizes germs oh, you know how well, you put your phone into one of those yeah things? the problem is those take up a lot of space so i just need like a it's just as big as a fucking cleaning bottle no, it's not. I just had like an anti-back wipe and I go shoo, 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 shoo. What are those wipes? Clorox wipe. Mm. I just need to, my Clorox wipes upstairs all dried out. So I don't have access to them. The <laughs> it's too big. I don't think you... What? <laughs> well, it is too big. There's no place to put something like that. I already looked into that a while back. <laughs> they have one of those like little phone vacuum Yeah, things. I had one. I got one from like a FabFitFun box. I never used it because it was like annoying because it was too big and I didn't have anywhere to put it. Just because you have so much crap on your counters, you don't put them back where they belong. So what is the best way is to <laughs> grab a paper towel, throw some Windex on it and go over my phone. I do is that Windex all the time. Is Windex antibacterial? I have a special Windex, but yeah, I mean, you're cleaning it. That's God, you sound like my big fat Greek wedding right now. Windex Please is great. Before Windex my bed, before my big fat Greek wedding, I already was in love with Windex. We used That's it all bullshit. The time. How old were you? Um, are you kidding? I was in charge of washing all the fucking windows down the shore every <laughs> fucking week with that Windex from like age eight on. <laughs> like it was so much. <laughs> Me and Olivia, get the windows washed. Get off. <laughs> God. And Olivia was so little, she would just hand me fucking paper towels or do nothing. <laughs> yeah, Gabby yeah, said I didn't know Windex made a mix. Of Honestly, Gabby, I don't know if it is, but like that's just a myth that it's not cleaning it. It's like, it's fine. You're cleaning it. <laughs> like, it's an all purpose Windex that I have that I use. You watched Hitman. Okay, I oh, put okay. it on. No, no, I didn't finish it because I couldn't pay close enough attention, but I can't me wait too. to watch I was it. Bored. Oh, no, I wasn't bored. I was I just. Was. I was just too busy thinking about other things, but I can't watch. Can't wait to watch it, man. I should probably give it another try. I'm just. I love so Richard Linklater busy. so much. He's my favorite. So. Who? Richard Linklater. Who's that? He's the filmmaker and the writer. He did Before Sunrise, After Sunset, Before Midnight. Oh. Everybody wants some. Um, the one with the little boy who went through like twelve years of life. What was that called? Boyhood. Okay, that's all him. Anyway. All right, so I guess that's what what right now. The last couple of weeks we've been really busy, so we haven't what right now as much as we normally would. I just said four time. shows that I've watched. I guess so, but like I we didn't watch any movies. No. <laughs> um. All right, I want to take a second before we move into the main discussion to thank everyone who's listening. We love y'all. This is a viewer supported show. At, we have a Patreon, so and if we couldn't do the show without y'all, <laughs> um, our Patreon is patreoncom slash at those working fangirls. We have lots of super fun perks. The five dollar tier, we have an extra show every single week called 
fangirl tea time that's attached to every show and you're part of the patreon it's an extra half an hour where we talk about more personal things happening in our lives today i'll be chatting about olivia's wedding i'm so excited also at the five dollar level you get access to come to our live recording so you can be a part of the chat and you also get ad free i was like what's the last thing uh, all the episodes are ad free and that is available to you at the five dollar tier which is called team jacob and we have a seven day free trial of team jacob if you want to test it out there are 77 episodes worth of fangirl tea time to delve into y'all so <laughs> there's lots of content there i kind of want to like go back and listen to some of like the like our first it's ones. so interesting because like we forget those little stories that happen in our yeah. life and i love that we have them documented which is why i was like i'm skipping all the other stories to do like the olivia's wedding this week because when they're fresh you get all the little details and they start to fade away. So we would really love it if you, if you're not, if you haven't already, if you subscribed to um, the show for free or followed the show for free in your favorite podcasting app. So wherever you listen, whether it be Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Pocket Casts, you can follow the show for free so that you never miss an episode. And then if you like the visual version, we have a visual version of every show on our YouTube, youtube.com slash at those working fangirls. And you can subscribe there for free so you never miss an episode on the YouTubes. And uh, we also have two other tiers on the Patreon with lots of fun perks. Team Edward, you get bonus episodes. Team Polis Bananas, you get to come to our fangirl bonding sessions every month. You get to fill out a form to be on the show. We have a listener on the show every month. It's a fun time. So check that out. All linked in the show notes. Now, after these messages, unless you're a patron, we will be diving into our main discussion. Be right back or not. We're already here if you're a patron. <laughs> so today we are talking about... So we got a request from one of our patrons asking for an episode about other romance authors that we love because they had gotten into Colleen Hoover and really liked our Colleen Hoover episode and are looking for more romance authors to dig into after they finished all her books. Today we're going to delve into our faves. And before we even do that though, I thought it would be really interesting to talk about what we specifically each of us prioritize in a romance novel because that helps you figure out which ones you're going to like the best because Natasha and I have like slightly different tastes and so I put down 11 things that people look for in their rom-com romance novels and we're going to rank them like how important each of those things are to us when we pick up a book. Well the first thing I have down here is a relatable lead. Natasha you didn't put any numbers down. I, how know important... What? Is there a relatable lead to you enjoying a book? What are we what are we talking about relatable? Are we talking about like relatable in the fact like they relate like, back to our lives? Like they have a personal thing that you've connected to that you feel very strongly connected yeah. about. Like it doesn't have to be everything, obviously. I'm just like talking like one thread that you feel like is really relatable. Yeah, I, I think like I think if if we're talking like I don't I've now I've read books where I've read like like a trophy wife type of situation. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, yeah, this is fun. But, like, there does, there needs to be at least, like, one little thread that keeps me interested. Mm -hmm. And so I would say I, I'm, on a, I'm on, like, a number five for this scale. Cool. Yeah, I mean. Wait, wait. I, is, is, number, is number one? Is the highest. Like, oh, number one's the highest and 11 is the lowest? Yes. Yeah, I think five. Five is pretty center. <laughs> yeah, for me, I feel like having something that I relate to in the leads, like, life or the way that they think or something is really important to me loving the book and feeling attached to it so i have this as my number one out of 11 ranking here because if i feel like i relate to the way that the lead is talking on the first page i'm immediately hooked and i'm going to buy it when we we just read paradise problems mm -hmm. and i have been consuming a lot of like curvy like plus size characters recently and Paradise Problems, we in like this is like a true like Christina Lauren type of situation where like they love to dress their characters. Like one of their my favorite things about their writing, which um, I loved about like The Office when like uh, Christina's fanfic that was turned into beautiful beautiful bastards she had like outfits picked out for every single scene, and I just got it got me. And I love the main character; she's so fun. I love her, but love she her is too. like your typical like straight size absolutely like bombshell girly and i was like oh this is not relatable for me like i i'm like 
I've been reading so many like curvy leads where I'm like, yeah, she was soft here and she was soft there. And uh, it kind of took me out of the story because I'm like, uh, well, like this is never going to be me, but it's, it's, it's fun to read. She's relatable in other ways though. She's yeah. like very, um, she's very funny. <laughs> she's, mm-hmm. um, and she is like working really hard to, you know, do a job that's more freelance and harder to figure out. Yeah. And well, I'm, I'm not saying like her personalities and like yeah. what her wants and her needs. I'm just saying like her body. Cause I've been very focused mm-hmm. on, on kind of feeding that, that part. Cause there's yeah. so much more media now than there was ever before. Yeah. Um, with like curvaceous plus size characters. And it was just a very stark, change I think for change for me to kind of be like, Oh, okay. She, this girl really does not look like me. I'm not done with it. Yeah, but she's so like I've just been laughing a lot. So oh I'm god, no. That's it. she's hilarious. <laughs> the whole thing. It's I'm just really so good. Enjoying it. Um so that brings me to the next thing that like we look for in a romance book or a rom-com and that's witty banter. And Christina Lauren so mm-hmm. good at this. Um this is really important to me if the banter isn't bantering I just get bored really fast of the book so this is my number 2 on my ranking scale mm. of 1 to 11 what about you Well you know I do love me some angst and yearning <laughs> and I don't <laughs> always need banter so I think I'm going to put That's the drama down here <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to put 7 and Wow because I, I I can go back and forth. Like, I, I do love witty banter, but I don't always need it in a book every single time. Sorry, I have my favorites at the top here. Uh, laughing out loud. <laughs> <laughs> I have that as my number three. Because, like, if the book is making me lull, it's going to be up ranked so much higher. And I'm going to want to keep reading it. Well, that sounds like you. I'm going to do an eight for this. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so far down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I when I I mean I do love a rom-com, but my favorite thing is just the fucking drama. <laughs> All right. See, this is so wherever which way you lean, you'll lean toward those recommendations when we get to our favorite authors. <laughs> All right. Next, I have sexual tension, which I fucking love. And so mm. um, I think Shots mentioned something about like Survivor not having the romance aspect and she was like, kind of bored. Like that's me with any book that doesn't have sexual tension. I'm like, what am I doing here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so need that like sexual back and forth tension between the characters when they're talking and Mm -hmm. like interacting i have that at four for me uh yeah this is very important this is like two for me (laughs) like i i just love characters that are just like magnets to each other and they can find each other in any room and you just want like the two of them to interact because like something's going to happen. If we think about movies, one of my favorite movies is The Proposal and that's laugh out loud funny. But also there's such great sexual tension such in that great movie. Tension. The chemistry <laughs> is through yeah. the roof. Mm-hmm. Very important for me. All right. Smut. How important is smut on your one to eleven? Oh, are we supposed to? Oh, oh, we're ranking them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. Well, now I've lost track. Hold it's on. okay. It's okay. It's like about the same sort of an idea. Sometimes when there's too much smut, it's too much. You know, yeah. like I like I like a nice medium um, yeah. where like I don't need like there to be the several. Smut has sex to be scenes. earned for me. I it does like have to be earned just there. Yeah, because then it doesn't feel important. So it's yeah. just like wasting. Space. I love a good slow burn. Yeah. But then like a lot of heavy petting at the very end of the book. <laughs> so probably put smut at, did I already put six? All right. I'm going to put it at like eight for me or nine even because when there's too much smut, I get like annoyed because it's not meaning anything. Like I like when, so another category I have here is memorable sex scene. I like when there's like a memorable sex scene, but I don't like when there's like 50 million sex scenes because then it's not memorable. I remember running into this while I was writing my first book with like kissing scenes. Like I want the kiss scenes to be special and memorable and mean Mm -hmm. something. And if there's too many kisses, it starts to just like blend into nothing. So I remember taking out kisses because I was like, if it's not memorable and like really meaningful, I want it gone. Cause then you don't remember the other ones and it's not as important. Yeah. And I, I've, 
I've read my like fair share of just like smutty books. Like I think the last one I did was Icebreakers. And that like I remember Chloe and I talking about it and we're like, yeah, it just was like too much. And that's what I used to like read when I was younger, like reading um, like fan fictions and things like that. And like those books are good when you're horny. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but like as far as like a good story, nah, like I could go to fan fiction like you could, you could go to Wattpad for that stuff. Like I don't need a traditionally published book to 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 get me off oops um <laughs> i'm here for the story and if it's not storying i'm like what is this <laughs> which brings me around to meaningful character arcs and this is everything for me in a mm-hmm. book like if there's no meaningful character arc i'm gonna close it and be like what was that and so i have it at five because i was doing not like i wasn't doing like ranking it on a scale i was doing like we ranked these in order of like the importance to us from one to twelve um like if we were just ranking it at a number and i could do number two over and over again i would have like number two being a meaningful character arc because mm-hmm. that's really important to me uh <laughs> Yeah, I think this is, is it's important to me. Is I, I do like a good plot, and I just don't like it when in a romance book when they have to break up, so so that they, don't they can have to break up to have a meaningful character arc. But it happens all the time, like yeah, like because... book lovers and well, they didn't really break up though. It was like this weird like in between period where they had to figure themselves out. I mean, well, there's oh yeah, that there's ways to do it without new mooning, like. It, it's acceptable when it's a chapter long. If it's like a whole book, I can't mm-hmm. deal. No, 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 no. No, but I like you deal. can have a meaningful character arc and have like a quote breakup that's not actually a breakup where you like figure yourself out for like 10 pages. <laughs> yeah, that's what I prefer. I don't need yeah. multiple chapters. Yeah. Because a lot of time mm-hmm. there, like if it does have a genuine conflict, you do need to like have some time apart for half a second. But like it doesn't need to be a book long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. Okay, I mean, I would put this at a four, I guess. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's important. I'm seeing Gabby say a breakup will ruin a book for me. But like a lot of times it's not actually a breakup. It's like, I really love you and this is in my way. I need to fix it. Like, and then we'll get back. Yeah. But Sarah says the third act breakup is in every book lately. And it drives me insane. I think when we're reading back to back. It's literally all of our lives. It's all ever. ever. (laughs) It's just because we've all been consuming way more romance novels recently that like we're seeing it happen more often. But um, it's like there has to be some sort of conflict. And that conflict a lot of times will end up separating the couple for a second. There's not much you can do within like a romance story to like subvert tension. having yeah the break and I like I just I don't like the word breakup all the time because a lot of times it's a forced separation mm-hmm. it's not a breakup like this is there's a difference between like someone having to move for like some um, more some reason or whatever then like new moon where edward is just like i'm breaking up with you for your own good like that (laughs) fucking pisses me off and that was a trend in ya for a while in the late Mm -hmm. like 2010s where every book it was like i'm not good for you so we're breaking up and it was like (laughs) fuck that that's not a legitimate reason for a breakup but in these books like these romance books a lot of times it's like something really intense is happening where they have to go do it or else like their family is gonna die you know like there's Mm. a lot of different things in the air where it's like legitimately like this is an issue that they have to resolve before like they can go have their fun romance story (laughs) Mm -hmm. um it's not like i'm not good for you i'm not good (laughs) fuck off okay uh a good cry oh yes a good cry all right. <clears throat> I love a good cry. This is very important. I like to laugh and cry in a book. And that is why Colleen Hoover is like, she is the queen of laugh and cry. <laughs> <laughs> and Emily Henry can do this pretty well, too. I laugh and I cry and I love it all. I don't like crying um, <laughs> in a book. I'd rather just be like, mm, well, I like happy cry a lot. That's it's not just uh, sad cry. Oh, I don't do a lot of happy crying um, mm. ooh, because I can't, I don't like getting myself to that point. So I would put this as like a 11 for me. 
Okay. Yeah. The happy cry, like, I will cry when the couple gets together and, like, says cute things. Mm. Like, everything's going well. Or, like, if they make their parents proud or, like, they make their daughter proud or, like, anything like that. Like, that's why I was crying at the end of Bridgerton. Happy crying. <laughs> and I, I, I guess I was, like, a happy sad cry which i didn't love because i was like i feel empty (laughs) (laughs) um katie says abby jimenez is also really good at the laugh cry she is excellent at the laugh cry Um, yeah i couldn't take one i don't cry as much when i read abby jimenez though she's very funny Mm -hmm. all right memorable kisses we already talked about sex scene Uh, i think memorable kisses are really important to me i would put them like a four oh we skipped drama Oh, drama. Okay, yeah. You you skipped drama. Well, how important is drama to you? A uh, number one. The <laughs> angst, the drama. I need it. <laughs> I mean, a book needs to have it, but it's not like my favorite part. It's my like annoyed part. <laughs> like, shut up. I love a good like she gets kidnapped and he has to come <laughs> save her. I like a good like gangster, not a gangster romance, but what's it? a mob romance. <laughs> Those always have high plot lines. I love when they stick the landing. If a book doesn't stick the landing, it leaves such a sad taste in your mouth. Yeah. Oh, definitely a stick the landing. Yeah, that's very important to me. All right. I think this leads very well into our favorite romance authors. So I've been already talking about like my favorite romance authors. Abby Jimenez, Emily Henry, Christina Lauren, Coho. Those are my favorite recent ones. And then I've got, of course, my OG, Stephanie Perkins, who wrote Anna and the French Kiss. She was like the first like romance book I read, mm. unless you count Twilight, which is a romance too, but it's romanticy, I guess. And then Rainbow Rowell, who wrote like my OG obsession book, Fangirl. Yeah. What was that telephone book? Landline. I also loved that one. Mm-hmm. Mine are Marina Zapata. I've talked about her books here and there. She's the one who did... The one with the the Wall of Winnipeg? Yeah, The Wall of Winnipeg and Me. That's my one of my favorite books of all time. I, I just reread it, I think, last year. I freaking love that book. Also from Lukov, from Lukov with Love, I think, is the ice skating book that she did. A lot of her books are centered on sports. And I love me a good sports romance. <laughs> don't know why, because I don't love sports. But, like... <laughs> pro athletes yes is that like <laughs> high school dream oh i think so <laughs> yeah yeah you belong with me fantasy yeah. there's also her newest one that came out last year was all roads lead to here or something mm-hmm. like that um and i really like that one i think the the main character was much older and it was very interesting she was like a singer and she moved in to her uh moved into like a dad's back house he was like a, a young single dad and it was it was like a hate to love type of situation i've of course got ali hazelwood on the list yes of course you do and christina lauren and mm-hmm. olivia dade and then jennifer l armentrout mm-hmm. um she more actually romantic right more romantic but that woman writes like she's running out of time like well she there, she is what she's like going blind she is Yes, that's why she's been writing so fast. I had no idea. Oh my god, I can't believe you didn't know that. I was so sad when I found that out. I didn't know that. Wait, that's so sad. Jesus. She does have just regular romance books, which I I, I read back in the day. Like, way back. One of my, like, very old favorite authors who I like I still kind of read her stuff is Marina Hale and she wrote a paranormal like fucking scary ass romance series which I would be interested to read it reread it now because I wonder how my thoughts would be but uh, I was obsessed wait say it again what's it called sorry not Marina Karina Hale the dark house series since we kind of have different scales here with what we're looking for we both love Christina Lauren so much what are your top three Christina Lauren books I probably put Paradise Problems as number one. Nice. I loved it so much. The Unhoneymooners. Yes. And and then the um, the roommate one. Roomies. Roomies. Nice. For me, my top three, I love Christina Lauren too, so I've read all of those and enjoyed them too. Mm-hmm. But my favorites are The Unhoneymooners, also on your list. The Unhoneymooners is so good. It was mm-hmm. the first Christina Lauren that had made me happy cry. 
And I was mm-hmm. like, yes, it's giving what I need. <laughs> Um, it was so good. I had that emotional arc that I really love and it was so fucking funny. Um, the soulmate equation. Excellent. Yeah. Had also a great arc. Very funny. I love the concept so lots much. Lots of drama. Lots of like fun drama with mm-hmm. the app that, um, the app that like you do a blood test and it matches you with like, you know, like your ideal perfect scientific match. perfect match. Yeah. Um, and then I loved something wilder so much. Oh, I forgot about that one. Yes. Not a lot of people talk about something wilder. I think the cover hurt it because it wasn't cute. It's so fun. It's second chance love. It's like an adventure romance, which big fan. (laughs) I love an adventure romance. They're like treasure hunting in the desert. It's Mm -hmm. awesome. And it's so fun. Those are my top three right now. I haven't finished Paradise Problem, but we'll see where it ends up being. I love that they reference Romancing the Stone, which is one of the books I, one of the movies I told you to watch Mm -hmm. in Something Wilder. They're like, oh, we just want to write like a a Romancing the Stone type of novel. And if you guys haven't watched Romancing the Stone, it is so good. It was made in the 80s with Michael Douglas. And it's just one of those like fun adventure romance. Like if you like The Mummy, which I fucking love The Mummy. I will rewatch that movie probably about two, three times a year. It's like (laughs) The Mummy. I would one day love to write a novel that like resembles the mummy. So something like that. <laughs> nice. So I do prefer the one with Sandra Bullock and Channing Tatum. What is that called? <laughs> um, oh. Fuck. And Island, I can't remember what it's called, but you know what I mean. It's like, it's, it's literally like modern Romancing the Stone. Mm-hmm. And it's just a lot funnier, whereas like Romancing the Stone has more like drama. Well, here we go. <laughs> Lost City. Sasha, thank you. <laughs> yeah, they're both very good. I want to talk about your top two authors who aren't technically romance authors, but like you love the romance in their books so much. Also, I didn't mention, but I love Jenny Han and she's also romance. She's just like her books are YA romance, but they're fucking adorable. I mm. love to all the boys. The trilogy is my favorite. Um, Sarah J. Mass. <laughs> nice. She does have the drama locked down. <laughs> I, I love Sarah's book so much, but if I'm going to talk like my favorite romances that aren't actually romance novels, it's Cassandra Clare's books. Mm. I am feral about her love triangles and parallelograms. Like, I love all her characters so much, and they're so funny. Mm-hmm. Like, the comedy is prime in Cassie's books, and I love it so much, and I have the best time. And with Sarah's books, like, it's definitely, like, I love them, too, but it's more about, like, the angst and, like, the drama and, like, mm. the the intensity of what's happening, where Cassie's is more, like, lighthearted humor within the fantasy elements that are happening and the kick-ass stuff that's happening. I do have another. I, uh, <laughs> Naomi Novik, who wrote wrote uprooted i've only done the uprooted series it's like a duology but they don't also they're in the same world but they're not the same story i love her romance it is like it's very quiet but also like very sexy yeah shot says cassie has the banter and she does she does so fucking good (laughs) the banter top tier top tier i'm trying to think of one other one so that i can give one more Rick. I didn't talk about my other faves romance authors much, but like, because you guys already know about Emily Henry a lot. My favorite Emily Henry books are Book Lovers and Bee Tree, but all of her books, top notch banter, top notch mm. comedy, top notch everything. I know. I didn't really get to talk about like Ali Hazelwood or Olivia Day. Yeah, give us your favorite books of theirs. Ali Hazelwood, um, Bride has taken, has taken number one spot. I think that's like the perfect mixture of plot and drama but it's like kind of sandwiched in between plot lines so there's like a lot of time spent together because they have to be in a house together the whole time and it's just uh, it's so good and there's a lot of hate to love because she's a vampire he's a werewolf and then they have like a mating thing going on which i fucking love a mating (laughs) um livia dade is a plus size author She's the one who wrote Spoiler Alert. Yes. And she has a whole series about basically if the actors from Game of Thrones fell in love with plus-size women. <laughs> it's so 
fucking good. That sounds so fun. It and is. It's so fun. I'm sad I haven't read it yet because I have read nothing. In the, <laughs> I've read nothing in like the past two years, I feel like. Um, no, it's really fun. Olivia Dade, she, the first one, spoiler alert, is about a fan fiction author and a cosplayer. She is writing fan fiction about the Game of Thrones show, which is called something else. And she becomes friends with the, one of the actors from the show, but she doesn't know. And he's writing fan fiction to fix the last season's oh, plot. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and it's really good. The newest one she just, I think, put out in the series last year, because I think I read it during the summer. It was in the pool. It's, it's from two actors' point of view from the show. And they're both plus size. And um, we kind of go through the whole, like, eight years of them being together, but not because, like, they didn't really want to get together while filming. I love a time. <laughs> a I know. Time show. <laughs> It's a big, yeah, we skip a lot of time. <laughs> what about Abby Jimenez? What's your favorite Abby Jimenez book? I've only read the two. Oh, I, I mean, read the I two. would say, wait, you did? Yeah, Part of Your World, and then the one we read in London. Yeah, the that friend zone that you had to stop. Through. Wait, you didn't read the next one, the Happily Ever After playlist? No, I haven't read that one, and I haven't oh, read the so new one fun. either. Oh those are on my list. Yeah, those are on my list next to yeah. read after the ball's done. So okay. I'm literally going to take all next week just to, like, be lazy and read. All right. My two favorite are Part of Your World, which you've read that one. It's so good. And then Yours yeah. Truly, which is... That just come out? No, that's the one that came out before this one. So Just for the Summer just came out, which is also great, but Yours Truly is the one where like they're both doctors and um the guy has social anxiety that's the one where i kept being like wow i do that and i didn't realize that was anxiety <laughs> and that's the best they write letters in part of your world yes right? yes and they write letters yeah. to each other and it's so cute i love letters <laughs> <laughs> love letters <laughs> um <laughs> it's so fun and it's fake dating yours truly which is fun the tension is just like oh it's so beautiful did you ever read a book that like just made you cry so hard that you are like so wounded from it and you won't ever read it again? Um, I don't know if you've heard of this book, Allegiant. Uh, I, <laughs> I like, meant in the romance read. world. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't. I read like a lot of rom coms, and romance has happy endings. So yeah. yeah. I mean, okay, all your perfects from Colleen Hoover. I remember after that, I was like, that was so upsetting. Mm -hmm. But like, it ends on a, a high note. But like, it was hard to get through. But at the same time, I couldn't stop reading it, and I found it so so interesting because I'd never heard from a woman's perspective who was trying to have a kid. Like I was younger at the time. Mm -hmm um now we're older and we're like a lot of our friends are trying to have kids and i feel like i understand those issues so much more clearly because i read all your perfects i really opened up my mind to a lot of stuff that yeah. i didn't know about that's true i guess i do cry during colleen but the one i'm thinking of is me before you oh <laughs> The thing is, me before you, everyone was already talking about crying a lot. So, like, when people tell me they cried, I'm already like, oh, I'm not going to now. Thanks. You spoiled it. <laughs> Sometimes I just, like, allow myself. I'm like, okay, I'm going to cry. I think one of the the biggest ones that was probably Outlander. Because Diana Gabaldon is technically a romance author. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, but she his, is. For sure. A historical romance author. Mm -hmm. And I did read the first four books. And they're all about a thousand pages long. They're so big. And they're so big. And you also get massive history lessons during the whole thing. Like, I know so much about Scotland because of Diana Galveston. <laughs> it is insane. Um, like, I could take you on a whole tour of Scotland because of her. <laughs> and, um, I think I, 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 Drums of Autumn, uh, which is the second book when they have to go back and then you fucking have to watch him send her through the stones I oh my god i was a disaster <laughs> i haven't read romances that do that to me as much as like the fantasies and the dystopians and all of that did that to me like murdered mm -hmm. me <laughs> i think mean, like a, a, a dramatic historical fiction usually has a, a terrible cry in it <laughs> that i think is going to wrap up our main discussion today natasha do you have a Merry Kiss clip for us today? Okay. We're doing the Bridgerton men. 
We have Anthony Bridgerton, Benedict Bridgerton, and Colin Bridgerton. Who are you gonna marry? Ooh. Who are you gonna kiss? Who are you gonna clip? Um, I'm definitely marrying Anthony, and I am kissing Benedict, and I am cliffing Colin. Sorry. What? I don't find Colin attractive. There's something about him that annoys me. Like I like him for Penelope, but like he irritates me so much. <laughs> Uh, he's definitely like, uh, like you hurt me. Yeah, there's something about like, him that's not sexy to me. Like his smolder mm. doesn't do anything for me. It's not like when I see Ian smolder on me and I like melt into a puddle. <laughs> I um, yeah, this season. I mean, I thought he looked very cute and he was very hot in it. I don't know. I I think. I mean, I'm definitely going to marry Anthony. Lilies. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! I love when they're playing charades. Yes. And like, let us, let us, like me not. <laughs> it was such a great throwback. Lilies. I know we had just talked about it. <laughs> you smell of lilies. <laughs> We're marrying Mr. Lily. <laughs> Anthony, um, I think I'm gonna kiss Colin because yeah. And I'm sorry, Benedict, but you're being cliffed. <laughs> your your storyline's just boring right now. I need I need to know what's gonna happen with you. Sad for sad for Benedict, but I understand. Well, that's gonna be our episode today, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. We had so much fun having all of y'all patrons here in the chat. If you don't already, we'd love if you follow the podcast for free in your favorite podcasting app. If you haven't, we release episodes every Friday. Chapter chat has been on a bit of a hiatus um, because we've been so fucking busy that we haven't been able to squeeze in a second recording every week so we apologize we will have that back up and running as soon as we get our lives back together um, <laughs> um but for now obviously the regular pod will be here every week and um our podcast is edited by alex polis and ricky mcbrayer and sometimes us and <laughs> <laughs> um, the music is by Cole Jenkins and the vocals are by Heather Traska. Our socials are run by Chloe Laverson. So make sure you're following us on whoop, whoop. Instagram at those working fangirls on TikTok at those working fangirls. Um, that way you never miss, um, anything that's going on. I think we're announcing Instagram is a fun place to follow us. That's where you're going to get the most information. And all those links are in the show notes. We are off to go record Fangirl Tea Time. So if you're a patron, that is coming up. If not, thank you all so much for listening. I'm Christine. I'm Natasha. And we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.